who can be deported. Those are the devastating words just heard by an Iraqi refugee who resettled in Sacramento after the war in his home country. A refugee who has now been battling for years to be released from jail. Being clear, the most serious charges against him, murder and terrorism, has not yet been enough to win his release. Now he's entangled in an immigration battle. His name is Omar Amin. His immigration attorneys, Siobhan Walton and Eileen Shugel, are with me live now to unpack all of this. Ladies, good morning to you and thank you for being here. Good morning. Good morning. This is a case that Fox 40 has been following since 2018 when Mr. Amin, a husband and a father, was arrested while living in Sacramento on refugee status. He was accused of murdering an Iraqi police officer before he came here and helping to start an ISIS terror cell. Now, earlier this year, a judge determined there was no basis to extradite him to Iraq for those charges, in essence, tossing them out. But still, this immigration issue, what's going on here? Yes, and unfortunately, his immigration case is still pending. The charges against Mr. Amin in immigration court are significantly broader than the extradition case that was brought. Um, there are broad allegations of terrorism and additionally charges that he committed fraud in applying for refugee status. And we received a ruling as to the charges against him on Tuesday. So if the evidence that would have seen Omar prosecuted for murder and terrorism aren't valid, according to a judge. He was proven to be in Turkey and not in Iraq when the police officer was ambushed and killed. How is it that claims on his immigration papers can potentially send him back to the country that he left over fears that he would be killed there because of his political beliefs? Silas? Well, the immigration proceedings are quite different from the extradition proceedings. The charges against him in the immigration proceedings are completely different than the charges he was facing in the extradition proceedings. And they're just separate processes. So the U.S. government is using all the different processes they can to try to force Mr. Amin to return to Iraq. Okay, and so mentioning these different processes, let's be clear. Did your client provide any false information to the U.S. government? Did he lie about how his father passed away or his brother's involvement with terrorists when he was applying to come here? So at this stage, the federal government has been very clear that they're continuing to investigate and seek to criminally prosecute Mr. Amin. So at this point, um, he nor his counsel are in the position to comment as to exactly how his refugee process unrolled, unfolded rather. Um, but what is clear is that the government cannot, in our opinion, prove that fraud by clear and convincing evidence. The immigration judge did make findings to the contrary on Tuesday. She did sustain some of the allegations of his alleged fraud in the refugee process, but we do not believe that that decision was supported by the evidence. And we will, of course, appeal that decision as appropriate as the case moves forward. Alrighty, so that was my next question. This ruling this week means that he is eligible for deportation, not that he's going to be or has a date to be deported. So he still does have a chance to argue against this. He'll be able to testify about why he should not be deported. That's right. So immigration proceedings have two phases. The first phase is re the removability phase. And so in this case, the Department of Homeland Security was alleging various reasons for which Mr. Amin should be found deportable. The immigration judge sustained some of the allegations against Mr. Amin and found him deportable. So now we move on to the relief phase of the hearing where we will be seeking various forms of immigration relief so that Mr. Amin can remain in the United States with his family. And do you plan to argue for release on bond? He's been behind bars and, is way, and away from his wife and children now for well over 1,000 days. Yes, definitely. That is on our immediate radar. We um, have been working on it since Tuesday. We will be filing a motion in immigration court soon and hoping to get a bond hearing scheduled in the upcoming weeks. And then just why, why with all the other evidence gone, do you think that the U.S. government is really just hanging on to this particular immigration issue? He's sort of become a poster child, if you will, with some of these concepts. And it just seems with some of the evidence that's been thrown out, why? We ask ourselves that as well. We do think that this is the case that the U.S. government has put a lot of resources into. 
The U.S. government has similarly put a lot of resources into its war on terror, and the U.S. government has a hard time losing in that war. And so we do think that that's playing a big part in their decision to continue to pursue Mr. Amin's return to Iraq. We know that he does have a wife and five children here. How is he doing? You all are in contact with him and I'm sure in contact with the family. There's a, a huge community that has come out to support him. How, how are his family and how is he handling this still being behind bars after all this time? Mr. Amin is very strong. He's extremely gracious. Um, still every day he's thankful for the opportunity to fight a case as opposed to the systems that people are subject to in his home country in Iraq. He is always thankful and grateful to be able to fight in court and to have so much support. Mr. Amin is very thankful for everything the community has done to show support throughout the years and asks that the community continue to support him, particularly with his bond hearing coming up and his family equally has been very strong and gracious in the face of um, such the horrific things they've been put through um, these last three years. And when are we looking for that bond hearing to happen? Have we gotten a date yet? We d Go ahead. Um, we don't have the date scheduled. Uh, we will be filing a motion soon and asking for a date very soon. Fortunately, the judge did indicate on Tuesday that once the motion is filed, the hearing will be scheduled promptly. Um, so we hope in the next few weeks. All righty, we'll be checking back in with you to see what happens. Ladies, thanks so much for explaining all of this and giving us your insight this morning.